Dr. Califf, as I'm sure you are aware, the pharmaceutical industry is probably the most powerful special interest here in Washington, D.C. It has spent over four and a half billion dollars on lobbying and hundreds of millions of dollars in campaign contributions over the past 20 years, not to mention the huge amount of money it spends on advertising. And as Senator Burr mentioned, on top of all of that, 45 percent of its budget comes from user fees. And one of the major reasons of the pharmaceutical industry, among many others, is so powerful is its close relationship with, uh, with the uh, FDA and other regulators in Washington. Uh, as you may know, over the past 40 years, nine out of the last 10 FDA commissioners went on to work for the pharmaceutical industry or to serve on a prescription drug company's board of directors. A gentleman named Curtis Wright, who was not a commissioner, but a high-ranking official, in 1996 left the FDA to receive a $400,000 compensation package at Purdue Pharma less than a year after he approved OxyContin with a label that said it was, quote, very rare, end quote, for patients to become addicted to that opioid. Tragically, obviously, that was not the case. Unfortunately, uh, Dr. Califf, you are not the exception to that rule. Since you left the FDA in 2017, you have made several hundred thousand dollars from pharmaceutical companies and have received consulting fees from Merrick Biogen and Eli Lilly. According to your financial disclosure form, you own up, you currently own up to $8 million in stock of major pharmaceutical companies. At a time when the American people are outraged by the high cost of prescription drugs, deeply disturbed about what happened with Purdue and OxyContin, what kind of comfort can you give to the American people when you have been so closely tied to the pharmaceutical industry yourself? How are they going to believe that you're going to be an independent and strong voice against this enormously powerful special interest? 